Hi, this is Jeffrey with Lightbox, and today we're going to go over optimizing images and getting them ready for your website. Main reason why you want to optimize the image is for speed. The smaller the image size is, the faster the web page is going to load. And if you add images that are way too large, it's really going to have a negative impact on your website. It's going to load slow, and viewers are going to start to bounce off before the web page could even load. All right, so let's go ahead and start. For this tutorial, we're gonna be optimizing the images in Photoshop. And don't worry, it's gonna be super easy. It's gonna be fast. It's not gonna be technical. If you do not know Photoshop or know really how to use it, you still can do this because we're not going to uh, get deep into it in the technical aspect. So let's go ahead and start right here. We'll go ahead and just choose an image here from Unsplash. We'll choose an image that will be a large size banner, such as this banner that we see back here. So let's go ahead and pick a random image that will look good for a background. All right, let's go ahead and choose this one right here. Okay, so on downloading, let's take a look at it. So we can see this image right here is 6.9 megabytes, almost seven megabytes, and that is massive. And just to give context on the size of this image, your web page should be under 1.2 megabytes for the entire web page. That means all images, all code, scripts, everything the website has, it should be smaller than 1.5. So this already far out exceeds what you should put on your website. So let's go ahead and optimize it. So I'm gonna drop this over to our Photoshop right here, let it load. Okay, and here we got our Photoshop. You see all these tools here on the left. Uh, you see all these settings up here on top, all this here on the right. We're not gonna to touch any of it. We're gonna make this as simple as possible. Okay, and what we wanna do is you press Shift, Option, Command, and Save at the same time. Now this takes you over to Save for Web. So you got the save for web portal right here and you can see the size of it right here is almost eight megabytes. And so let's go ahead and optimize it. First thing we want to do right here is make sure it's the right file format. You got GIF, JPEG, PNG. We want to stay with the JPEG. Just about all your images that you put on your website are going to be JPEG. Uh, GIF is only if you're going to add short videos and PNG is only for rare cases where you use cutouts and you want to cut out the background to something. So everything basically is going to be JPEG. Also JPEG could be compressed more and it's way more web friendly. Okay, so now we got it on JPEG. Make sure that is set, uh, a set on progressive. Right here, you see the quality. Now this is the compression and this is where we reduce the size of it. Thing is, you don't need 100% because that's more for like prints. That's something for, you know, something for way larger, not for a website. A website's not really gonna be able to tell the difference between 100% and 90%. What I like to do is stick around the 80% mark. You know, our, our, our goal is to make the size smaller, but we still want to keep the quality of the image. We don't want to look in fuzzy. We don't want to look in pixelated. So I find 80% compression is a good number for me. And uh, I get good results with it. So you want to make sure this is clicked off. And you also want to make sure that this data, the metadata right here, is also set to none. By default, all the images have metadata in it. And what the metadata is, let me uh, pull up the image right here. We'll click on Get Info. And you can see right here where it shows all this information on the image. Now, this is the metadata. We don't need it for the website. This also adds size to your image. So by keeping that out, we can make the image even smaller. All right, so now let's go ahead and resize the image. This image is 7,680 pixels. That's huge. Uh, most laptops, most desktops are gonna be around 1,300 to 1,500 pixels, 1,200 pixels. 
So no need to have something this big because no screen is that big. I like to use around 1200 pixels. I use 1200 pixels, sometimes 1400, depending on the project and how high the quality the image needs to be. But I find 1200 is a sweet spot for me for the large banner images. Uh, if you're going to use a smaller image that's more of a thumbnail, then I would make it even smaller. But the large banners, 1200 works pretty well for me. So I'll go ahead and add 1200 there. Hit enter. And you can see we reduce it all the way to 432K. That's less than half a megabyte. That's a big difference from what we had. And also the quality of the image is going to stay the same. This is still kind of big though for me. Uh, I like to keep my images under 200. So I'm going to reduce the quality a little bit. I'm going to take it down to 70, see what happens. All right, it's still kind of big. Uh, that must be because this image has a lot of different colors and details in it. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it up to 75. We got it under 400K. It's still on the large size side, but it's not terrible. Not as long as you don't have many images this large on a website. I think this is good right here. We have everything checked off. Go ahead and click save and that's it. Optimize JPEG. Go ahead and save it. And there's our image for web. You can see it still has a quality inside of it. It is now the right size for a website and it's going to load whole lot faster than the eight megabytes that originally was well i hope this helps out uh we'll use photoshop for this one i use a few different tools i'm going to release a couple more videos on uh, the other tools that we use in case if you use something different from photoshop such as affinity okay, and that is it your image is now ready to load on your website via wordpress or whatever platform you're using i hope this video helps out if you have any questions please throw them inside the comments and if you find this useful go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and press the like we're a new channel just getting started i usually make a lot of these videos for our clients and for teams that i work with uh, and i figure that i want to start sh uh, sharing and sharing to others and go ahead and spreading it out because this is how i learn i found videos and just clear instructional tutorials, super helpful inside my development. I want to go ahead and start doing the same and give them back. So yeah, please subscribe, like, if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments and thanks.